Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. A well-made preliminary impression and subsequent preliminary cast are necessary in order to construct an accurate final impression tray. The materials necessary to secure preliminary impressions for the edentulous patient are alginate and rubber bowl, an alginate spatula, a cement spatula, a red-handled knife, a mouth mirror, soft red wax rope, a water measure, and a selection of Winkler-McGowan edentulous alginate trays. After positioning the patient with the chair upright, the head supported in the headrest, and the patient's mouth at the approximate level of the operator's elbow, we are ready to select the proper tray. The patient's present denture is a useful guide for selecting the proper size of tray to be used. The purpose of this tray is to carry, confine, and control the impression material, and therefore should be slightly oversized. The tray selected is always tried in the mouth to ensure adequate clearance on the peripheries and to determine where modifications may be needed in red utility wax. The maxillary tray is being modified in the post dam area with red rope utility wax. When securing a preliminary impression in alginate of an edentulous mouth, it is advantageous to use slightly warmer water and in less amount than we would normally use for dentate patients. The differences in the water temperature and water powder ratio will result in a stiffer mix that will set faster. The stiff material will better record the peripheries and soft tissue anatomical landmarks necessary for the impression. After mixing the material until smooth, the tray is loaded. Notice that very little of the mix is placed in the tray. A small amount of material is first wiped into the labial vestibule to avoid trapping of air. A cement spatula can also be used. The tray is then inserted and seated from the back to the front, which keeps the material from running down the soft palate. The buckle and labial flanges are border molded with slight manipulations of the cheeks and lips. The patient's head is steadied with the operator's arm, and the tray is held by the operator until the material is set. Setting time is lessened when warmer water is used. Never leave the patient unattended while an impression is setting in the mouth. After the material is set, the tray is removed. The patient's mouth is inspected to ensure that the airway is clear. The impression is next inspected to ensure that the landmarks and peripheries have been adequately recorded. The tuberosities and hamular knots should be identified bilaterally. The buccal and labial flanges should be identified bilaterally. And the buccal and labial frenuli should be visible. Often the fovea palatini are distinguishable at the posterior border. Material distal to the hamular notches and fovea can be removed. In order to preserve the accuracy of the impression prior to pouring in stone, it is covered with a wet paper towel. The mandibular denture is used similarly as an aid in selecting the proper mandibular tray.
The appropriate tray is tried in the mouth to check possible impingements. It is then modified with red rope utility wax as needed, in this case the distolingual flange area. The alginate is mixed as before using warmer water and less quantity. The tray is loaded using a moderate amount of material and then delivered. A mouth mirror is usually helpful to hold the cheek out when the tray is delivered. The patient is asked to move his tongue from side to side, one time only, which helps to mold the distolingual extension or lateral throat form area. After removal of the mandibular impression and inspection of the patient's oral cavity for debris, the impression is inspected for landmarks and outline form. The impression should include the retromolar pads bilaterally, the buccal flanges, the buccal frenum bilaterally, the labial flanges, and frenum anteriorly. The lingual flanges with distolingual extensions is a must in the preliminary impression and is often difficult to achieve. A well-made preliminary impression and subsequent preliminary cast will result in an accurate final impression tray. After spatulating a mixture of one-half Yellowstone, one-half impression plaster and uh, beating this mix until smooth, the preliminary model can then be poured with the use of a vibrator. The mix is carefully vibrated into the preliminary impression, making sure that air bubbles have not been trapped. This mix of half Yellowstone, half impression plaster is placed to just cover the peripheries of the preliminary impression. A base former is filled with the mix of half stone, half plaster. And then the maxillary impression is placed into this mix. After pouring the mandibular impression similarly, being careful to clean out the tongue space on the mandibular impression and allowing the stone to harden, the casts, uh, impressions from the cast can then be separated. The preliminary cast can then be removed from the base formers, and after thoroughly uh, wetting the surface of these casts, they can then be taken to the model trimmer and trimmed in order, and trimmed in such a manner that the uh, final preliminary model will look similar to these with a landing or boxing edge of approximately one quarter inch around the entire periphery. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. 
For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.